What you're looking at here is a rocket stove style steam broiler system that I put together to run a couple steam engine designs that I've built. We're going to go ahead and use this to produce the steam for those engines. Underneath that cover right there is a pressure vessel, an iron pressure vessel. We have a rocket stove style firebox underneath the pressure vessel that gives the heat to it. We also have the cover over the top that kind of acts as an insulative layer, allows some of that heat to wrap around it, to coil around the tank, uh, more effectively heating the tank. We also have a chimney zone right here. And if I let the camera kind of focus in for a moment down in there, You'll notice the end of the pressure vessel right there sticking out into the actual firebox of the chimney. So as the fire from the rocket stove comes up the chimney, uh, a good portion of it's going to run by the end of that pressure vessel, delivering a little bit more of it into the vessel before it leaves our output here. I just wanted to walk you around and show you this real quick. I'm going to go ahead and undo a couple of the bolts I have on either one of the sides here. We have two bolts on this side and one bolt over here on this side that holds the lid down over the top of the pressure vessel. It's also a seal for the whole stove. Just give you one more look down the entire system. I'll give you just a shot down the firebox. It's a really nice long firebox. It's not very big around, but it's gonna give us a nice rocket stove style uh, burn in it. And we've gotta put a door on there that's really well sealed, obviously, so we can regulate the flame. All right, here's a quick shot with just the cap removed over the pressure vessel. So you can see how the pressure vessel sits in there. See the end of it going back into the chimney. You can see how well it's nestled down in our angle iron kind of cradle that's created in there, which you'll see here just in a moment when I remove the pressure vessel. So here you see all three of the pieces from the rocket stove separated from each other. We've also got the extension piece of stove pipe on there so we can get a faster draw on that, a little more safety to it. So let me go ahead now and kind of walk up to it, show you what it looks like. You can see the long firebox. You can see our angle iron bracing going through there that holds up the weight of the water tank. You can see how the fire system is going to work. You can see the hole cut in the back of the chimney for the end of the tank to fit into. Pretty simple, folks. Just uh, needs a door now, like I said. We're going to need a hole saw into the tank, put our pressure relief valves in there, and our pressure gauge as well. The tank lid itself is pretty self-explanatory. It just has a couple lips on it on either side that one of them bolts down to the bolt here. The other one, because the lip's a little different, has an extra plate on there and two bolts that hold it down. That way we don't have much leakage. There's still going to be a little bit of leakage, but very, very little. So there you go, folks. I wanted to show you this, even though it's not complete. Our burn ban just went into effect here. So I'm not going to be able to fire this up until probably September. And we're not going to be able to run any steam engines until then. But I thought I'd share with you the design come September. I'll show you this again. We'll have our pressure relief valves in the pressure tank. Everything will be ready to go. Our steam engines will be hooked up.